So hello non class student to the today's lecture and uh, this is course number uh, MA 412 linear algebra and today we are giving lecture number number 31 okay yeah so um so far we have discussed about normal operator and cell bracket operators okay and today we will discuss another very important cat, uh, class of operators it's called okay so there are uh, two such operators one on real inner product space another one complex inner product space and they're called orthogonal orthogonal and unitary unitary operators okay so we will define those operators first what do you mean by these operators okay so uh, so these operators having the same property uh, only except the fact that underlying field is uh, different and let us define what do you mean by this so definition so let um, p v and in a product space in our product space and uh, we choose the operator t belongs to LV, okay we say t is uh, orthogonal um this is for uh, this underlying field is real or uh, unitary if this underlying field is complex if what happened if uh, t comes to t star is okay not only that and they are also identity operator t t star can do t star t can do identity operator okay so so you understood that uh, so so okay maybe maybe this is unitary uh, and the for orthogonal uh, we will say that t t transpose equal to t transpose t equal to identity okay for orthogonal this for orthogonal because for real Vector space um, t star equal to transpose. Okay, so orthogonal. Because in that case, uh, t t star becomes t star becomes t transpose. Okay, uh, over R real right? Over real that is true. Okay, so these operators are um, called orthogonal or unitary. Generally, we use unitary operators uh, in general, but uh, when we talk about real numbers, we call it orthogonal operators. Okay, and uh, we will see the several properties of uh, these operators and several equivalent condition forms of defining these operators. Okay. Uh, but let me just talk about some examples. So, um, example. Now suppose I have uh, this R two over R, and then we define something called rotation, right? So, uh, rotation operator. So, the T is the rotation operator. Rotation operator by theta angle okay and theta we can choose zero in between theta in between pi seven or whatever to pi 
Okay, some some angle, rotation some by some. Okay. You can choose to pi. No problem. Okay, so um so 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 then we know that uh, with respect to the basis let's uh, say standard basis how you look like so you look like uh, the the material presentation of this actually look like um, you remember that uh, it, it's um, cosine theta sine theta it's minus sine theta cosine theta right okay so this, this was that uh, material presentation of um, this uh, this operator with respect to this or some some people use here plus here minus also no problem some people use here plus this minus also okay so uh, so uh, hmm. then obviously okay so maybe I can say here something for uh, this is for operator and for matrix also similarly you can define a matrix is uh, orthogonal if a transpose equal to a transpose a into identity and for unitary you will say that a star equal to a star a equal to identity okay so this is unitary unitary is orthogonal so what does that mean that means that uh, if you choose a uh, so corresponding basis if you use an orthonormal basis of the space of the matrix will be either orthonal or unitary accordingly the uh, the, uh, the field is real or complex number okay so you can easily see that actually uh, these operators are uh, this this rotation operator is actually um, is actually uh, orthogonal in this case because I'm talking about uh, R okay so and then uh, so th there are many proofs so so obviously you can you can so, so maybe you can say A then you can talk about what is A star and A star will be uh, A star will be nothing but cosine theta cosine theta and then sine theta minus sine theta okay which will be a, a transpose also right so a star can be a transpose because this is over r i to choose okay now you can you can do this matrix multiplication by any side and you see that uh, this is actually identity matrix okay so this, this gives an example of operators which is uh, orthonormal uh, which is orthogonal operators okay um, so um, there is a one more operator which is over R we, uh, we call reflection operator so that, that is also orthogonal okay, so let me define what is reflection operator and then I will give a proof maybe after sometimes because I need some of the proof in between okay so um, so uh, definition let me define it so um, maybe maybe I have a so so let me define the soft space okay so so let um, L be a one dimensional one dimensional subspace of R2 okay so that is what that is a line um, passing through origin okay uh, so we can define there is something called uh, reflection about the line L. So what does that mean? So um, so a operator, a linear operator, T 
on R2 is said to be a reflection on R2 about the line L about uh, that line L if something happened what happened if um, uh, Tx equal to x for all x belongs to L so for any vector in on L uh, the image on T is same and not only that and t of y equal to minus y for all y belongs to l part so if we take the orthogonal complement then uh, t sends every vector on the orthogonal complement to minus negative of that vector okay then this kind of operator is called reflection and now we will prove that this is also orthogonal operator okay later okay now um, uh, let us try to find out first a uh, few uh, equivalent conditions on uh, this condition of orthogonality okay so we'll do it for finite dimensional vector space for infinite dimensional vector space um, some of the conditions may not be true okay so this is our theorem this is one of the most important theorem here for today's lecture so let um, we be a finite dimensional finite dimensional inner product space so so i'm not talking about anything here real or complex vector space it can be anything okay what if and um, your linear operator on V, okay, and then the following are equivalent. Are equivalent. So number one is what? Number one that uh, the definition will be assumed that uh, T common with T star and this is not only this identity T T star equal to identity T star still right? The first condition that means uh, it's either unitary or orthogonal whatever you say and it is also saying that and right, these are the inner products. So what, what is the second condition? The condition says that if you take the image of um, so it choose any any vectors and if you take the image uh, with respect to T and take the inner product so it's same so this is true for all x y you know to be what does that mean that means so this means that that is T is a the inner product okay t p is the inner product okay so uh, number one number two uh, we will write down by this and number three uh, number three is what so if uh, so D is an orthogonal basis of D orthonormal basis of V and then uh, TV is also so so TV T of V TV means that uh, this is a collection of elements 
uh, which are image of the element from B under T. Okay, so this is also this is also an orthonormal basis. Ortho normal this is a very okay so uh, if you start with the orthogonal basis the image will be also orthogonal basis under t okay and number four is telling that their existence so this is almost same but for finite vector space they are equivalent actually so uh, there exists exist an orthogonal basis B of V such that T V is also and optimal basis of the okay and number five is that um, uh, that uh, the t preserve the uh, something for distance so what does that mean that means if we take norm of tx it is actually equal to norm of x and that is true for all x belongs to v okay so 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 that is t is a the distance i mean you can say the length or uh, so if you know the length is preserved and distance also because you can define metric in terms of the norm right so if we preserve the length maybe i can write down this same as distance length of each vectors um, okay so so that means no matter whatever vector you choose the length of the vector will be same after the operation also okay and this type of operators are called isometry so uh, t is called this kind of t is called an isometry isometry okay now so now this condition is actually not true in in case of infinite vector space you can see that okay for finite vector space uh, they are equivalent but for infinite vector space you need something else you need subjective property also okay or injective property any subjective property is enough okay but for, for finite vector space this is obvious almost so uh, that injective subjective property are coming almost obviously that's why we don't need it okay so now um we will prove one by one because these all are important property so maybe uh, proof so one in place two so one in place two means is what so what is given so given that that t t star equal to t star t which is equal to identity of operator okay this is given to us then i need to prove that that t p is of the inner product okay so let uh, you choose x y from so v okay and then what happened then you can you can start in a product with this y and so x you can think about the identity so what you can do so you can write it down in terms of x equal to ix so you can write down this ix of y but i i is nothing but t star t star t so 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 this to this of x over y which is nothing but t x 
dy. This is this is obviously for any x y because I choose x y arbitrary, right? So that means t uh, p is of the inner product, right? So this is the two number two is done. Okay. So now um, if we imply two, so let um, so what what is given? So okay. So let me just so this is two implies two implies three, right? This, this we need to prove. So what is given here? It is given that um, that uh, t x equal to t x y equal in a product equal to in a x y for all x y belongs to V. This is given, and it will prove that if I start with orthogonal basis, the image will be again orthogonal. So what do we do? So let beta equal to something say t one v two something v n b and ortho normal basis of uh, v okay then i need to show that tv is also right now this is orthogonal basis uh, which is given to us uh, and then what will be tv to tv will be of the form t of v1 t of v2 and so on t of vn okay so uh, how do you prove the t of uh, this also orthonormal so two things one is first of all i need to show is orthogonal and then uh, these thing is norms one but it is again it is enough to show that uh, the inner product is delta product of the delta right what is the inner product of that so if you choose t v i um, and uh, say t v j what will be the inner product of these two vectors this will be okay, from the given condition this will be uh, inner product of v i v j because we know that t v is up the given that t v is up the inner product right so uh, but this is what this is delta i j so that means uh, it is zero if i not equal to j and it is one i equal to j so and that implies that this implies that tv is uh, orthonormal right ortho normal simple proof that easily that tells you these things okay Okay, so now, uh, um, so this is 2 plus 3, 3 plus 4 is simple, very simple, because this is obvious almost. Why? So, uh, 3 says that image of orthogonal basis is orthonormal. 4 says that there exists the orthonormal basis, such that whose image is orthonormal. But that is, on a finite and vector space, in a product space, you always have orthonormal basis, right? So, as... Uh, Mm, is fine dimensional finite dimensional there exists B and which is orthogonal which is an orthogonal basis ortho normal basis of v right and from 3 uh, that image will be so thus uh, t of b is also and okay And also an orthogonal basis, ortho normal basis of V. Okay, so this is 3 in plus 4. Okay, now from 4 in plus 5, 4 in plus 5. So what is 4? Four? 4 saying that. Uh, there is an orthogonal basis of V 
such that the results are thrown out. So it's given that so let the the um, ortho normal basis of V such that TV is also orthonormal. This is given to me. Okay, and why are you doing so that T is asymmetric, right? So um so so let me write down that so B is maybe of this form V1, V2 and Vn so that T V is of the form T V1 T V2 T V N okay this is given to us now um for any x any vector so for any vector x belongs to v we can write down x in terms of linear combination of basis vector suppose this is the form some ci vi i equal to 1 to n where ci is elements of the scalar field okay this is obvious because uh, every vector is, can be generated in a combination of basis vector right so now the question is that what will be uh, the norm so the, the so so the norm square will be what norm square will be in a product of this right so we can write down norm square which is in a product of x comma x right but this is will be nothing but in a in a product with summation i equal to one to n c i v i and summation j equal to one to n c j v j okay now you use the property in a product that tells you that this will be double sum one sum will be i equal to one to n another will be j equal to one to n and then you'll have c i c j bar and then you'll have v i v j right so again v i v j are actually uh, orthogonal basis so when j equal to i it will only survive otherwise it is zero right and that value will be one so in that case it will be what it will be summation i equal to one to n okay and summation so and then when j equal to i this will survive so when j equal to i it will be ci ci bar and this will be one this person will be one so it will be summation ci mod ci whole square right ci ci bar equal to one to n okay so so um yes and uh, okay so now again it is given that uh, tvi also orthogonal basis uh, so what you can show so you can show that okay this is one this is one equation so you start again what you can show you can show that uh, this t of x will be of the form summation ci tvi i equal to 1 to n right and uh, this is another way of writing the basis of, uh, that with image of t in terms of the basis tvi right but then uh, I want to find out what is the length of that so this length whole square will be norm of tx tx okay but norm of tx is nothing but in a product with summation i equal to 1 to n ci tvi comma summation j equal to 1 to n cj tvj okay so it will be double sum i equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to n ci cj bar and then tvi comma tvj okay now ti tvj uh, so because tv also orthogonal basis so so this will be again will be either zero when i not equal to j and one when i equal to j right so it will give you again 
i equal to 1 to n c i e mod c whole square right so now you see that this is exactly equal to the product of uh, this norm of t x square right and hence norm of t x will be equal to norm of x and that is for all because my x is arbitrary long to feet okay so what does that mean that means uh, this is isometry okay so that that we also proved that uh, if we there is an orthogonal basis such as the image is also orthogonal basis orthogonal then the the map itself has to be isometry okay so this is meaning of isometry okay now uh, the most important one that this isometry implies uh, isometry implies actually um, uh, phi plus one right that uh, i mean on phi doesn't this is not true in general and let me tell you again so uh, um, this is given norm of dx to dx length now we need to show that t distance t is equal to identity right now so 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 to show this thing i need one very important observation on lemma i can say that so let me first prove that lemma and then we will come here okay or maybe maybe we can we can or we can prove the lemma in between also okay so no problem so this is given to us this is given that is isometry okay then uh, if this is isometry then what you can do so you can start with uh, the fact that you can take the square and this will be again this right one left hand side will be in a product with x with x this will be in a product with tx with tx okay and um, that will be nothing but x comma x and t star t of x x right this for all x so what does that mean that means um, i minus t star t of x comma x equal to zero for all x belongs to for all x belongs to v okay now um, and now uh, now we will claim that this operator is actually a self adjoint operator and if for a self adjoint operator this is true then uh, then actually that has to be zero itself right now how do you, how do you prove this so this is for all v block so now now our claim is that claim that we define this maybe uh, say u which is i minus this t is self adjoint or Hamishian, whatever. Well, that is obvious because u star equal to i minus t star t whole star which is nothing but i star minus t star t whole star this is i minus again t star t which is right so you say it's self adjoint operator okay so uh, so when you have a self adjoint operator then what do you know so you know that uh, it consists that the test space v consists so so thus uh, so u is a lot joint operator on so u is uh, self adjoint on v okay so what does that mean so thus and there are two options so either um, i mean so okay so it can be uh, uh, so i can say also hermitian like for complex case generally for hermitian so there are two options either it is over real or complex 
but in any case if it is over real also you can find out a orthogonal basis consists of eigenvectors of u or you can say that uh, over complex also you can say that it, it, it consists of orthogonal basis of it consists of eigenvectors because right because when you have a self body operator which is um, uh, for example um, you talk about complex numbers right then they are also normal operator right so in any case you always have a uh, thus V has an ortho normal basis and uh, so let's say this B of the form say V1, V2, Vn consisting of so these are what these are consisting of eigen vectors of uh, that u right so u is the self body operator so you will have a basis orthogonal basis whose elements are eigen vectors of u right so what does that mean that means that is uh, u of these vi's will be something ci vi's for some ci belongs to f f can be real or complex that is better okay clear so now uh, hmm, what is given to us so we, we so this is this is nothing but telling that this is u right so u of x equal to x this is true for all x belongs to v right this is given to us so what does that mean that means in particular um, okay so so for every vector v u of this equal to this and so uh, so what you can say you can say that uh, this is true for basic vectors right because this is true for every vector okay so uh, so let me now choose that basis vector so uh, so uh, th this is true for every okay so yeah so ux in a product of u with x equal to 0 for every element of this so thus thus you can say that in a product of u vi vi equal to 0 for all vi belongs to the basis vector right because for every vector it is 0 means a basis vector is 0 right uh, but uh, uh, th this is this is nothing but ci vi and then this is vi this is zero for all vi belongs to v right but this is nothing but ci comma vi vi this is zero right uh, but because vi vi i cannot be zero vi is a basis vector this cannot be i cannot be zero as vi is not equal to zero this implies in a product vi vi is always positive right so this implies ci is equal to zero okay for all vi belongs to v okay so what does that mean that means uh, so so u of vi is r zero for all vi belongs to v so your operand term which is zero on every basis element okay so that's what does that mean that means u has to be identically zero operator so this is zero operator zero of the uh, inters okay but what is u u is nothing but i minus t star t which is equal to and the zero operators and hence t star t has to be identity right Clear. So, um, so this is the identity operator, and because uh, my, my, my is finite dimensional, uh, they, they are inverse to each other, right? So, so, so as is finite dimensional. T 
is star equal to t inverse right so thus uh, t t star is also is nothing but t t inverse which is equal to identity okay then so what does that mean that means t t star equal to t star t whatever we, so this proves that this proves one okay so 5 in plus 1 is also done so whatever we our claim was that we just proved that all these conditions are equivalent so what does that mean that means to check some operators is orthonormal or unitary or not uh, on finite national vector space or in a product space uh, you can choose any of those five conditions what does that mean either you can show that t t is equal to t is equal to identity or you can show that for any arbitrary vector t is a thinner product or you can show that the vector shows the basis orthogonal basis of eigenvectors such that the image also orthogonal basis for v or you can show that t actually is of the length so or rather t is isometry okay so these are equivalent in the case of finite dimensional vector space okay uh, so now um, immediate corollary so what you can say immediately on from this uh, theorem so so maybe i can okay so i will give the example after proving the corollary then i will give the example of uh, reflection why reflection is orthogonal on r2 so um so let me let me write down my immediate corollary say corollary one so in this case i will just divide into real and complex vector space so that i can talk about um, orthogonal and unitary separately okay so um, so let uh, uh, v be a finite dimensional finite dimensional real in a product space real in a product space okay um, and you have say t belongs to l v then uh, then uh, V has an oh, V has an, an orthonormal basis ortho normal okay so one more one more thing uh, okay maybe i will write down uh, okay i should say here obviously mm, well let me write down here orthonormal basis consisting of first thing thing of eigenvectors of t Again, mm, vectors of T uh, with special thing. What is the special thing with uh, corresponding eigenvalues? What is bonding? Eigen values are of absolute value one, absolute value one. So what does that mean? That means those CIs are actually the mod value is one, if and only if. Uh, t is both so t is both silver joint and orthogonal 
for the real root space, real inner block space, real root joint. Plus orthogonal. Orthogonal. Okay. So um, so what does that mean? That means okay. So one. So this is this, is this absolute value one. That we should tell that when uh, for ortho for uh, unitary operators or um, orthogonal operators, what do you know? You know that. Uh, the eigen whatever the uh, eigen value it has to be the modulus has to be one why why the modulus has to be one because of this last condition isometry okay so you see that isometric condition here yeah this condition no so this condition gives that suppose you have so tv equal to some cv okay c is the eigen value and then obviously you know that TV because T is uh, unitary or orthogonal, whatever you choose. So this is CV. So this has to be equal to mod C into norm V, right? But on the other hand, TV is nothing but mod V, and that implies that norm C equal to 1. So in this case, whenever an operator is orthogonal or unitary, the eigenvalues has to be a modulus value 1 always, right? So, so, uh, so that is condition here. So, this mod 1 is actually giving the cell orthogonal. So, when you want, so, so in the case of orthogonal uh, operators, means over reals, what are the options? So, there are two options only. So, that eigen values has to be either 1 or plus 1, plus 1 or minus 1. There is no other choice. But for the complex vector space, the eigen values can be anything on the circle. An unit circle on the complex plane. Okay. So now uh, let us prove this. This is if and only condition. There are two cases. So first we assume that it has a basis which is satisfying all the properties. So let V B, B has and um, orthogonal basis ortho. Normal basis say B, which is of the form say V on V to V n. Okay, such that uh, this V is uh, so T V is equal to C i V is and the mod of C i is equal to one. So that means um, these V i's are eigenvectors of T. And uh, the basis is orthonormal. Not only that, mod of C equal to one. Okay. So this is given to us. So uh, obviously, uh, uh, we know that if we have basis, so so this implies obviously the cellular joint is obvious. But this theorem only proved in last lecture. At joint, because whenever you have orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of T. Over a real vector space, then the operator has to be cellular operator, right? So this is cellular joint. But I need to prove that say T is also an orthogonal operator, right? So what does that mean? That means uh, so you can prove any of the given condition, whatever you prove. So what do we prove? We will prove that uh, T commute T T star T star T your identity. So this cellular joint means what? That means T star T star equal to T, right? And in this case, what you can show? We can show that T T star with uh, this basis vector vi for any basis vector vi you can write down this is t square of vi which is nothing but t of ci vi which is nothing but um, ci times t of vi right but this is nothing but ci into ci vi so this is ci square vi but mod c i equal to 1, right? So c i square equal to 1, that means this is v i. So what does that mean? So this, this is for all v i belongs to uh, this basis vector v. So, so t is star sends every vector with v, so that is identity, right? So this implies t t star equal to identity. And similarly, you can prove that t star t is also identity. Same proof, similar proof, okay?
दस आईस सॉरी तीस और तो ना दिस प्रूव दैट तीस और तो ना ओके ओके सो नाउ now we need what so we need to pull couple of the converse leaf the converse leaf converse the let uh let this is to given that is silver joint at the joint plus orthogonal okay um so then we need to prove that uh, that that exists in base okay uh, so so the obviously then one part is obvious then for silver then you can say that v has a basis um b which is v1 Consistent eigen vectors are consistent. Of eigen vectors of of t. Right, that is we know, but we don't know whether uh, uh, the eigen values are not one or not. That we need to prove. But because um, T is also orthogonal, so you know that. Now again, so this is this is for that is because the cell adjoinders, right? The cell adjoint property, adjoint property of T. Now, because uh, again, again, ortho banality of T, T implies what implies implies that T is asymmetric. Right? T is isometry. So, so what you can so you can say that uh, this norm of V I has to be equal to norm of V is for all i, right? For all i, but then you can multiply uh, both. So you can multiply. Um, so, uh, so okay. So 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 you can write down this as norm of uh, this is C i V i. So okay. So let me write down here. And that um, this is yeah. So, and you can say that T of V I equal to C I V I. C I is at the eigen values of T. So you can write down this is C I V I, but this is mod of C I into norm of V I, right? Okay. So, uh, so what does that mean? That means this implies that C I mod of C I is. Mod of C I equal to one. Okay, this is the proof. Okay, so this proves that uh, both orthogonal, both orthogonal and cellular joint implies that you have a orthogonal visual eigen vectors corresponding to eigen values modulus one. Okay, this is a different condition. Now similar proof, similar kind of theorem is true for um, complex in a product space. So in case of complex in a product space, what you will say instead of Orthogonal, you will say unitary operators. Okay, if you lift these unitary operators, because when you say it is unitary, um, then uh, then obviously you don't have to say cellular joint. Cellular joint will come out automatically because T will be T right? And uh, uh, so, so for complexes, T T will be star. But real case, actually, T orthogonal mean T T. Bar equal to bar t, right? So that's why we are writing cellular joint separately. Okay. But same thing is true for complex in a product space. Uh, for finding the complex in a product space also, right? 
okay so maybe we can we can prove that same thing as a home model okay so now uh, what are you talking about that uh, reflection operators uh, and we will show that this is actually an orthogonal operator so you remember reflection is what so l is a subspace of r2 unknown subspace and uh, t, t is, a, is a reflection about l about l so what does that mean so so, so you choose a vector say v1 so v1 equal to v1 so v1 belongs to l and then you choose another vector v2 as that is minus v2 so that v2 belongs to l part now i choose such a way that these um, we have the norm one so choose so obviously you can choose norm one vectors on l and l to right for example this is a uh, things and you, you, you can just take this so this vector is norm one here and then this is the orthogonal perpendicular so this is norm one in this is v1 and this is v2 okay so you choose v1 and v2 such that they, they have norm one okay but because it, uh, v1 and v2 are in the perpendicular things this you also know that t1 v1 they are zero right okay so what does that mean that means uh, uh, this b which is consists of v1 v2 this is on the one hand this is orthogonal basis and also it is also eigen so this uh, v1 v2 are eigenvectors of t corresponding to eigenvalue 1 and minus 1 right you see so what does that mean that means the basis the vector space v has orthogonal basis consisting of eigenvectors of um, eigenvectors of v1 v2 such that the corresponding eigenvalues are plus 1 minus 1 okay so uh, um, so just the, the parallel we prove that this is both self-adjoint and orthogonal, right? This is the proof. Okay. Maybe I will stop here.